Okay, so one thing I did do, where I have my two little fingers pointing, I put in extra pieces of spreader, cardboard spreader, so to put that bottom piece on. But the bottom pieces went on really easy. Even that front went on nice. Um, it was you know, a little bit of a struggle, but it was just placing it on exactly the way uh, it was, you know, very intuitive. But all the bottom pieces went on really nice. Like I said, the only thing I did different was I extended that back or, you know, that rear fuselage opened it up a little bit because it, when I put it on dry, uh, it was too much, it was, it, there was too much white showing. So then I put these two pieces together. So that part goes on the inside. It fits right over like that. And then the other part is on the top. So I cut that out so that I could um, kind of get a, a, a start of where the the opening is going to be. Now right along there, you can't tell, but there's uh, the bottom of that has a little tiny piece of coloring on it. So it's, the, the, the piece of wood is supposed to sort of overlap and have like a shelf on top. So anyway, these are going to fit nice. So went ahead and glued this down and uh, just do what we always do. Very simple. Put on some glue and then uh, smear it out a little bit. Being careful, especially because I'm going to be putting that piece on with the very, um, those very skinny pieces on there on, the th on that, that, that part could be a problem. Now you could have glued these together and then cut out the, the rectangle all at once. My worry was that um, maybe they wouldn't line up and I thought for some reason it might be better for me to cut one side out and then put them together. In retrospect it probably would have been better just to glue them together and then just cut straight through because um, all you do is line these up and they fit very well. So just being careful to make sure that things are on the edge the way they're supposed to be. And if they're on the edge on the rear, then they're going to be fine up front. Um, and you can see right there, I had to put a little extra glue on there. But it all comes together really nice. Squeeze that together and uh, it's just fine. Um, so it turned out, turned out nice. Give that a little shot like so. And now I have the 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 white part under there that is my guide for cutting this out um, so i carefully went through and cut that and again i probably could have just sandwiched them and done it all at once but i always have to do things different um, so cut that out carefully the little white rectangles on the um, to the right that you can see there's four of them that's where the wing uh, supports go and notice that this big white thing I'm cutting out now has a W on it. Well that's Polish for cut out and those other little tiny white ones um, there is no W on them so I thought these little pieces that are supposed to hold on the wing you just butt join them in there. So I merrily went along and um, cut all these things out and you'll see I put this on top of the hull and glue it in. It's all beautiful and straight. Only later do I realize that I was supposed to put these pieces in uh, uh, before I put this piece on, but we, we, we'll figure a way out around it. All these pieces, it goes without saying, um, color them on the edges to make them look a little neater. Um, I don't show doing this all the time, but um, you know, every piece I put on, I do end up putting edge work on it. Um, and you can see I, I test fit a few times, and there's places where white shows through, so I hit it with a little marker, just being careful not to go too far over the edge. It's a pretty close match, but you don't want it to look like you cut it outside the lines. Um, so you have to, have to make sure. But see, yeah, I should have put these little... These little uh, wing supports on right now. Cut those slots out, white slots out, put them underneath and glue them to the side of the hull and then, they, then just these little these little uh, tips would protrude out just perfectly but I didn't do that. There I'm making sure that the hull, the, the front of the little hull there is going to uh, match up and it looks really slick and uh, it also isn't balanced so it, it's going to be a tail sitter. So I decided I'm uh, going to put some pennies in there. So I took some pennies and I just shoved them in there and uh, weighed it down. 
Um, and uh, it's probably overkill, but there is a big tail on this sucker. And even if it sat in its tail, it wouldn't matter. It's a flying boat. It'll be fine. But um, I just decided maybe it'd be better if it was at level. Maybe that will help when I put the tails on, um, which will probably be the next big thing we do. I secured these with a little super glue and a little zip kicker. And um, now they are in there, and it does keep it nice and uh, level. So it also makes it heavy. you got to be careful now. Um, then I went ahead and put glue on all these edges. Again, this is the wrong thing to do. I should have put the wing supports in first on the side of the fuselage there, inner inner hull, and then put the top piece on, um, cutting out those white pieces and having it go over. But I, again, I did that incorrectly. So anyway, put this on everywhere. You put some glue. And as usual, I put too much on. Perfect. Uh, but you know you take a little bit off and I and I and I uh, am careful once I put it on there I want to make sure I get glue as well Then you just put this on and I think I start with the rear first to make sure it's nice and square That all has to be square and good because it is where the wing is going to go And so if it isn't straight if it isn't square the wings not going to be straight and square and you're going to run into a world of hurt later So you do have to make sure it's all clean However, it's such a, again a well-designed model um, works perfectly. So far the only only nitpick I have is, and I should have just looked at the parts I guess, but are those wing saddle pieces. We'll see them later because um, I did not know that I had missed it at this point. I'm just going along minding my own business and it's going great. Now you can see I'm trying to match up the little um, top piece there so that it will, won't will see any white see down there under uh, underneath the that forward there. It's supposed to be an overhang, but you don't want to have any white color. And I can use the table as a flat edge and sort of straight edge and sort of push everything down carefully so everything dries. You want to make sure this is all nice and tight. Looks good. Has to be watertight, just like the real one. Um, and I'm just making sure that everything is flat and true. And here's that piece I was talking about, that lip. That's really well engineered. That fits so beautifully. And that's colored brown, but inside of that, it's just white. Uh, and so, again, that's why I was making sure that I had my nice, uh, had the nice contour under there. But it all worked out just fine. Um, again, this kit is going together really, really slick, and it looks really pretty. I can't wait to start putting the tails and the wings on and stuff. That'll look really neat. Um, but there's the basic shape and the basic hull together. And uh, looks, looks the part, and again, looks so much like real wood. Now, up front there is a little streamline piece that goes up that holds a, uh, a windshield in front of the cockpit. So I think we'll work on that next. So, oh, I also didn't show you this, but I put on all those little pieces, those little circles that were just cut out and glued on. They are, I believe, covers for the watertight areas. They probably take those out and, and pump them out if water got in them, etc. And here are those pieces, and I realized at this point that I messed up. And I'll show you the parts that are supposed to go there. Um, and they're supposed to be folded over to make them thick. And you'll see on the plans here, um, those are the parts right there. 3BL, those two. The taller one goes forward. The shorter one goes behind. And I should have put them, like I said, underneath. But I messed that up. So this I didn't mess up, though. I formed this. And this is really nice. It's two sides. But notice one side is smaller than the other, and it leaves a white rim. That's because that actually fits along the edge of the other piece, which is amazing. It's really well designed. Then there's a little bend there that fits right there over the top of that combing. So that's where I start. Put a little glue there and start going around like that. And I see I've pre-shaped everything a little bit. And this is just like anything else, just like any other butt joint that you do. Put a little bit of glue on, squeeze it together, and just work very slowly and methodically going around, avoiding kinks. And um, the tacky glue makes it a pretty easy job. Don't put too much on. Like, that's probably too much in terms of the amount of space. I should put up maybe half of that much to get it gluing. Um, because the, the slower you go and the more the, the smaller area you work on, the better chance you have of having it, having it actually end up looking really nice in the end. Um, through the magic of television, I'm, I'm going forward here. But um, smaller pieces like that are a much better idea. 
little tiny widths um, of glue. But you stick them on there, wipe off the excess, get them nice and tight on there. And uh, this piece, again, fit beautifully in terms of like, the length, like the other end comes together perfectly. And so it's just, it's a nice little piece and uh, looks great. And so I put a little glue around the bottom piece that's going to hit onto the top of the decking in front of the cockpit. And uh, any excess glue that squeegees out, you can take off with a little bit of um, with a paintbrush or something. That, that's fine. Again, this stuff dries anyway. Make sure it's not squeegeeing out the side immediately here before I even start. Um, but you want enough on there so it stays. And then I just carefully put this on on the front using this little black outline that's on that deck and put it on so that it basically um, touches and goes over that. And then I just made sure that it was level and straight and pushed down on a little bit. Here I'm just showing, I'm kind of pushing, because at first like that front lip by my fingertips wasn't pushing down, wasn't, there was space. But if I just pushed a little bit, the glue dried, it stayed nice. And there it is. Um, looks really cool. I like it. It really looks like a, looks like a speedboat, a uh, mahogany speedboat. Um, so looking really good. So the basic fuselage is done. Now I start working on the seats and the seats, the same thing. It's two pieces, but there's an edge there that's a little bit smaller. And then those two pieces are where the seat belts are going to attach to. And then you can see that rounded pieces. There's two of them. Those are for the actual seats where your little bottom would sit. So first thing with these, like everything else, once it's dry, you start shaping it and forming it um, by rolling it. And then you put a little glue in. And in this case, I practiced it. And I, I knew that I could basically glue the whole thing in at once and sort of squeeze it shut. Um, if you're worried about it, do just what I did with the top decking uh, windshield piece. Just start with an edge and then slowly work your way around. In this case, like I said, I practiced. I knew it worked. Uh, because I, I've never had a model where they actually leave a shelf where things glue together. Um, it kind of gives you a positive location mark. I've never had one like that. It was this way on the seats and that way on that, that top streamlining, which is pretty cool. That's a neat, a neat touch. So I'm just taking off a little extra glue that might have squished out with my X-Acto blade. Um, don't be too crazy because, again, it dries clear. Um, and then that's the way the seat's going to sit. Um, ultimately, and I'll make the other one and just glue it in. Seat belts, I made the um, buckle out of fuse wire. Uh, it was out of paper at first, but I tried and I just made a mess of it. If you're better at cutting than I am, it would be you, you could do it. I put a little dollop of super glue, thick super glue on the end, and then I grab my little um, fuse wire buckle and just drop it on there. Oh, I'm making sure it's flat. Just drop it on there like that. Boom. And then hit it with a little uh, zip kicker, making sure you're not, not gluing it to the, paper, the other side of the paper you're on. And then that's your piece with your buckle. Then I put some super glue on one end and just dropped it on that seat edge. And then make sure it's kind of tight and squished down. And do the same thing to the other side of the buckle, which is easy. A little bit of glue. Bam. And then set it down like so let it dry or use some zip kicker either way. Um, I'm going to do a little zip kicker. And then the fun part is folding the paper down and trying to make it look sort of loose and natural. So you don't want to just stick them down directly. You want to kind of twist them around so they look like you just dropped off the edges or you, you took off the seatbelt and threw them in place. So they're not supposed to be perfectly symmetrical, for example. Um, put a little glue underneath the belt or underneath the strap so you have a place to glue onto the seat. And I use an X-Acto blade or tweezers to just kind of get it placed and push it down where I want it. A little bit of a squeeze out is okay. Um, this part of time I use a little bit of super glue to try to get that side down, but it worked either way. And there's the seat. And I just got to make a second one exactly the same way. Looks awesome.